Hello, dear friends and cultural creatives. Bruce here. It's May. My God, how the time goes fast, especially when you're having a great time. Margaret and I just spent five months overseas, Australia, New Zealand, and the last month was an amazing adventure in India. And upon my return, of course, I see the world is really moving through its evolutionary stages right now as we find a, a big issue with support of the government and the failure of the government uh, making headlines every minute of the day here. However, there is one story I want to talk about for this May newsletter. And that is the story of Angelina Jolie. Now, she's made big waves across the country about informing the public that she went through a double mastectomy as a preventive surgery to prevent a future cancer condition. Now, what do I think about stuff like that? I know what she thinks about it, but what do I think about it? Well, you already know what I think about it. And that is, we're dealing with something called the biology of belief. And the significance about the biology of belief is that our thoughts and our consciousness are really shaping our genetic expression. She comes to the public as a big representative of the Hollywood industry and a lot of people follow uh, stars in their lives. And so it was an unfortunate situation the way I see it, that she stands up and advertises her preventive surgery. Now, let's, let's clear the word right here. Mastectomy sounds so uh, clinically sound and clean, but the truth is this, when one cuts off their breasts for no reason at the current moment, uh, then that really accounts for what we might call, and here's the word very, eesh, mutilation. Why would you cut yourself up? And she says, well, because 87% of the women that have this particular gene are really liable to have breast cancer. Well, let's talk about this 87% for a second. Actually, I'd rather talk about the 13%. How can 13% of the people with the exact same genes not get the cancer versus 87% with the gene that gets the cancer? We focus on those with the cancer, but we fail to talk about, hey, there are many people out there that have the so-called cancer gene and do not express the breast cancer. What is the difference between the two groups? Well, the primary difference is the biology of belief. It's really what your attitude and your perceptions are all about because this is what shapes our genetics. And we know the new science is now called epigenetics. And I'm really excited because uh, uh, in the last two years, there's actually a, a new branch of epigenetics called behavioral epigenetics, which is how our perceptions and our life experiences and our beliefs alter our genetic expression. So, hey, the biology of belief, which was so far out to many scientists just in 2005, is now actually a field of science unto its own behavioral epigenetics. Well, Angelina Jolie is a prime example of what is the consequence of behavioral epigenetics, and that is your perceptions and beliefs are shaping your genetics. Well, now she has a belief, and this is really clear and it's very solid. Her belief is, having the genes that she's talking about predisposes her to the cancer. And her belief is, I'm going to get the cancer if I don't uh, eliminate my breasts at this point so that my future is really clouded by the threat of this cancer, which may take her life and separate her from her the wonderful children. So her motivation was prevent that future death by taking her breasts and removing them at the current time. Well, let's understand something. Belief is profound. Would I suggest to Angelina that she not do that mastectomy? Well, yes, I would suggest it, but I would also have to provide a bit of an educational background. But let's look at where she's coming from. Her belief is so strong that she can get this cancer and die. Uh, what would I do in that situation? Well, she's not the first woman that I talked to about this. I remember one in particular who was so set on the fact that she was going to get cancer. Her father's a doctor, her brother's a doctor, her mother died of the cancer, her grandmother died of the cancer, and she was so committed to the fact that she was going to get this cancer if she didn't do a mastectomy that when I started to speak with her, I realized that there was no changing her belief. That was a solid and hard belief. While I try at first to suggest that she not do it, I have to tell you the truth. In the end of our conversation, I said, I do recommend that you are the one that should uh, follow through on a mastectomy. And the reason is this, her belief was unshakable. She already knew she was gonna get the cancer. So if she's not gonna change her belief or her attitude about this cancer, then she must follow her belief. 
Angelina followed her belief, and this is necessary for her to do because if she's not going to change her mind, then she's really opening herself up to the cancer. My concern is this, is that there are many women out there in the world that are looking at her story, listening to her vision about the cancer, and are buying into her resolution. Um, this is a little upsetting because what it basically does is it commits people to believe that cancer is inevitable in their lives and this is the only way out. This is a belief issue. We must change this. And just to get an idea about how significant uh, it is to change your beliefs, there's a wonderful story that we should understand in regard to uh, cancer, breast cancer in Angelina's uh, regard. And this is a story uh, by a woman called Anita Morjani, and it's published by Hay House, and it's a book called Dying to Be Me. And very sig significantly is this. Uh, Anita had cancer for four years, and was in a state of uh, dying. And in her last days of life, uh, she was uh, no longer eating. Her body had become emaciated as she was self-digesting, her own system for nourishment. And uh, then she started to fall into a coma. The coma then sent her to the hospital and her doctor for four years said to her husband, yes, this, this is it, this is the, uh, and there's nothing more we can do. Significance is, uh, Anita had a near-death experience, found an afterlife uh, reality, and in that afterlife reality, recognized the whole story of biology of belief. She found that the uh, upbringing through her Hindu family uh, actually challenged her life because she didn't really conform to her culture, and this caused a lot of self-deprecation and belief about her not being worthy. In addition, she also had two very close friends who were dying of cancer, and the fear of their cancer in her life also promoted an illness in her, so she ends up with cancer. She goes to the out-of-body experience, and in that point realizes, yes, programming and beliefs led to this cancer. She had a choice in the story that she reveals about either staying in that afterlife or coming back, and she chose to come back. The most amazing part of the story is when she realized uh, in her near-death experience that her cancer was really due to life experiences and programming, she had the opportunity when she came back to change that belief. What's the most amazing part of the story is when she came back from this totally uh, uh, near-death experience and actually her physician said that was final for her, she did come back and within four days, the cancer was completely gone from her body. All of this really points to the emphasis of belief and programming and attitude. And this is why it's so important for people to recognize, yes, Angelina has the belief and the programming that these genes are going to shape the future of her life. If that's what her belief is, then it's necessary for her to follow through. However, I would like to encourage people to consider other beliefs and consider other understandings about the nature of cancer and our psychology. Because once we empower ourselves that we do not have to be the victims of cancer, then we can change our lives. And we don't have to go through the mutilation of our body as a means of prevention or protection. And so, yes, Angelina for herself did the right thing, but I think she did a disservice for the general public because she's encouraging people on the fence about their own issues of cancer genes to follow through on the mastectomy idea as a way of saving her life. It's unfortunate because what we really need are more spokespeople like Anita Morjani to reveal that cancer is a belief, an attitude, and a story that we tell ourselves, and that we do not have to go through the fate of our genes because we are masters of our genes. We control our genetics and our heredity through epigenetic mechanisms, and now, hey, thank God, science has now come out with the field called behavioral epigenetics, which I personally call the biology of belief, to reveal we are not victims unless our belief system says we are. So I'm just leaving you with this story. Before you run into rash action, consider the other possibilities about life. Consider how powerful you are in controlling the unfolding of your own life. And if you have doubts about that, please pick up the biology of belief and 
The same story applies to the new book, The Honeymoon Effect, which is out May 1st and, uh, and people are loving it. And I'm so glad because yes, I wanted the book to inform people about the nature of heaven on earth, but I also wanted to entertain them. And the early reports back are yes, informative and entertaining. And I appreciate that response. And I hope you have an opportunity to get a copy of the book. Visit the website, brucelipton.com. And perhaps you want to get a autographed copy. I would love to sign one over for you. And I look forward to seeing you again next month as we catch up on what's happening in our world today. Thank you.